Welcome back, Cotter! We're here to talk about another episode of Star Trek. I've mentioned this in several videos, but it bears repeating. The original series was pretty damn progressive for its day. It featured one of the first interracial kisses on television just a year after interracial marriage was made legal in the United States, had a Russian main character in the middle of the Cold War, and regularly told stories that were allegories to social injustices. Some of these things might not seem like a big deal now, but if you look at how the world was when this was on TV, it's amazing to see what actually made it to air. With that being said, this was still the 60s. There were some social norms that held them back or were just accepted, like stupid hippie bullshit. Star Trek was not and is not perfect, and when it came to women, they were both forwards and backwards. Sometimes their writing for female characters was not the most flattering, but for the most part, the show was pretty equally inclusive. And to be honest, their treatment of women was better than quite a few of the later Trek series. In the original pilot of the show, Majel Barrett played number one, the second in command on the ship to Captain Pike, but NBC executives didn't like the idea of a female officer in such a prominent position. So they couldn't go that far, but they did manage to get Majel Barrett into the show as Nurse Chapel, and the addition of Nichelle Nichols to the main cast was extremely meaningful as both a woman and a person of color. So they had a lot to go up against, but they sure put up a fight. And with all of that out of the way, here's their extremely sexist series finale. It begins with the Enterprise receiving a distress call from some scientists who were investigating the ruins of a dead civilization, so they beam on down to assist. Here they meet doctors Arthur Coleman and Janice Lester. Janice is suffering from exposure to radiation, but you gotta give her props. She woke up that day and still put on her makeup and her hoop earrings and her scarf because radiation poisoning is not gonna stop her from looking fabulous. You must remain absolutely quiet. Those are doctor's orders, not mine. You just sit there and dream about lipstick, gorgeous. Janice sort of whines at Kirk, so McCoy suggests he stay with her while they go look for more survivors. Sure, more people may die, but if that's the sacrifice they have to make to ensure the plot moves forward, so be it. Anyway, it turns out these two have a history. They dated for a year at Starfleet Academy, and that's the only time Janice truly felt alive. But according to Kirk, he never stopped her from going on with her space work. I never stopped you from going on with your space work. Yes, her, uh, space work, whatever that is. But the real reason she's peeved is because she wanted to be a starship captain. And here's where we're hit with this doozy. Your world of starship captains doesn't admit women. <laughs> yes, you heard right. Starfleet does not allow women to be starship captains. <laughs> In an idealized version of Earth's future, where mankind has supposedly rid themselves of the shackles of prejudice, Starfleet still has to put up a no girls allowed sign on the treehouse. <laughs> this line is just the chef's kiss of the episode, isn't it? The ultimate bullshit to end the series on. <laughs> we had a brain and brain what is brain before this, but get on turnabout intruders level. The best part about it is the length Star Trek fans have gone to to try and justify it. Like, maybe we can interpret it meaning, like, uh, Kirk's world wouldn't admit women? Gay confirmed? I don't know. <laughs> it's a stretch. Anyway, long story short, she's gonna swap bodies with Kirk. <laughs> In Roman mythology, Janus was a two-faced god, representing opposite aspects in nature, such as war and peace. Leicester is derived from the name of the English city, Leicester. Contrary to an earlier suggestion, it is not Old English for locality. It is a locality, and the name means Fort of the Ligore people or the River Ligore, which is of no relevance to this episode. The name Janus Leicester therefore probably has no special significance, and the resemblance to Janus is probably Probably fortuitous. The acting begins! <laughs> you had your chance, Captain Kirk. You should have smothered the life in me. Why didn't you do it? You always wanted to. Yeah, the strength to do it. Janice Lester takes the place of Captain Kirk. Only this Captain Kirk is not afraid to kill. Now you know the indignity of being a woman. 
See, this is proof that Starfleet was right all along. Women are just too emotional to become Starfleet captains. They see one ancient body swapping machine and then all of a sudden they go mad with power. The temptation to know a man's strength was too much. She can never go back to being a weak, dumb woman after this. Now she's gonna go PMSing all over Kirk's ship and frankly, that's a crime. Sexism is correct. It's better to be dead. <sighs> and to live alone in the body of a woman. Before Janice can get on with killing Kirk in her body, she hears the landing party returning. You see, she may be in a strong man's body, but she still has a weak woman's brain and can't figure out how to kill someone more quickly. Now aboard the Enterprise, we discover that Coleman was in on the whole thing and crazy Dr. Lester killed everyone else as part of her plan. Dr. Coleman is pretty pissed because he's in love with her, and the real reason she hasn't killed Kirk yet is because she's still in love with him. Love. Him. I can't believe Janice doesn't see what a good thing she has going here. This guy is willing to ride or die for her. He will date her in the body of a weak woman or a strong Starfleet captain, but she's still got the hots for stupid Kirk. <laughs> you can take a woman to a man's body, but you can't teach her to think. According to Janice's inner monologue, she spent years studying every single detail of the Enterprise's operation. One would assume, after all of this time, she would blend in like a well-camouflaged chameleon. But you would be wrong. But the facilities will be of little use if Dr. Lester is dead. Every potential Starfleet captain is taught to laugh at dying patients in their care. Ha ha ha, I've committed the perfect crime. And she immediately forgets all of the Starfleet procedures she supposedly spent years studying and runs away at the mildest resistance. Well, I see no reason why she should get caught. Okay, I will say this for Turnabout Intruder. Shatner has made some acting choices and they were all correct. Anywho, Janice has ordered that Janice be under the sole care of Dr. Coleman, who convinces them that Janice, who is actually Kirk, is Janice, who is actually Janice, and delusionally believes she's Kirk. Meanwhile, Janice as Kirk has reversed their course to take them to a crappy hospital and is acting totally weird. So pretty much immediately, her whole ruse falls apart. She's ordered to go to sickbay to be evaluated for emotional instability and erratic mental attitudes, also known as typical woman syndrome. For another example, see Nurse Chapel totally whiffing it here. Could I finish it slowly, Nurse Chapel? I promise I'll be good. Well, I'll be right back. Now, how was that keeping him in bed, though? Judo chomp! Janice is not making a great case for herself here, and yet despite her absolutely wild behavior, this episode acts like it is absolutely impossible to prove Kirk is not fit for duty at the moment. Janice as Kirk orders that Kirk as Janice be put into isolation, and even though she's being evaluated for mental fitness, I guess, what are you gonna do? Captain's orders are captain's orders! Spock goes to talk to Kirk as Janice, accompanied by Lieutenant Galloway, who died in season two, but I guess came back to life for this episode. Spock, it's me, Captain Kirk. Naturally, this whole story is a big space pill to swallow, both for Spock and the miraculously resurrected crewman. In order to confirm that Janice is actually Kirk, Spock performs a mind meld. Fuck off! Yes, that's definitely him. Whoop, dead again. Attention all personnel. First Officer Spock has been placed under arrest. He has conspired with Dr. Lester to take over the ship from your captain. Huh? Hey, what's he saying? Uh, don't worry about it. I think the captain is just possessed by something again. They'll handle it. Mr. Spock, is it not true that you're a meanie stinky head? And is it not also true that you're a big piece of poo-poo and I should be able to do whatever I want? I move that this case be dismissed on the grounds of come the fuck on, everyone. Sexist! You hate me because I'm a man! Case closed! It seems the court has no hard evidence to support this body swap theory. Telepathic evidence is inadmissible in court, and McCoy performed a blinky light test on Janice Kirk that apparently determined the captain was of sound mind, somehow. It looks like Kirk might be doomed to boobs forever. However, as I understand it, I... I'm Dr. Janice Lester. Violence by the lady perpetrated on Captain Kirk. Okay, so lawyer Janice S. Kirk's whole argument is basically, how could a stupid, weak woman pull this off? Come on. And with the truth revealed that I am not really the captain, 
And knowing that she would not be allowed to serve as the captain, then you would be the captain. It is inevitable. The sound you're hearing right now is William Shatner absolutely chewing the scenery. Unfortunately for Janice Kirk, she didn't expect Spock to say, uh, nah. It is mutiny! <laughs> Deliberate, vindictive, insane at his base! But mutiny is charged, and encouragement of mutiny. Dr. McCoy, Mr. Scott, you heard it? You know, anyone here could stop this. Like, I just don't feel like anything holds up in a legal sense. I've never been part of Space Court before, but I just think this is a real nothing burger. Silence! You will be silent! Well, I guess nothing supports the theory that Kirk is body swapped or not of sound mind, except for the everything happening here. Lock them up! After McCoy and Scotty decide to commit mutiny after this mutiny trial, Janice orders them to be put to death. And I mean, nothing can stop her. There's just no evidence. You can murder indiscriminately if you're a man. Go to your posts. Aw, oh, man. man. Somehow, this encourages more mutiny? You will obey my orders. We will be charged with mutiny. Stop hating me because I'm beautiful. You will obey my orders or... No, not the acting. I can't control my body. I must keep this penis at all costs. So, everyone was just sitting there watching this happen? Baby, can you murder my old body for me, please? Ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. And I guess, I don't know, it could just be reversed if Kirk wanted it bad enough. Or it was gonna wear off anyway? Unclear. But regardless, the estrogen leaves his body, and now Kirk can overact of his own free will. Oh, I'm never gonna be the captain. There, there. Here's a tampon to dry your tears. I didn't want to say this before, dear, but I really didn't want to have sex with you as a dude, so this kind of works out better for me. And then Coleman gets to take care of her? I mean, he got off kind of light, considering he was complicit in several murders, but okay. Her life could have been as rich as any woman's. But only half as rich as any man's. Cook out! And with that wet fart of an ending, Star Trek The Original Series came to a close. <laughs> I don't know, man. Season 3 had some issues. They were running out of money, people weren't watching, it was a mess. They got cancelled in the middle of filming this episode. That's how abruptly things ended. Bizarrely, for some reason, O.J. Simpson was visiting the set when they all found out? Poor Nichelle Nichols wasn't even there because she had another gig at the time. They didn't know Star Trek would have such a lasting legacy, so their morale was probably pretty low. Especially for William Shatner, who was slated to make his directing debut in the next episode. And according to him, he had the flu, and someone in the IMDb trivia section was determined to correct him on this. William Shatner had a severe case of flu during filming of this episode. Shatner's illness was probably man flu, i.e. the common cold. Even a mild case of the flu, influenza, is thoroughly debilitating and one cannot just soldier on. Severe cases of the flu are fatal. Shatner was so ill with the flu during production that a cot was placed in the studio so he could nap when not needed on set. The so-called flu was probably a bad cold. People with real flu, influenza, are severely debilitated and cannot work. Worst flu ever. I guess this person thought this episode was too sexist against women, so they'd throw in that man flu thing to balance the scales or something. Anyway... On top of all of the other bad mojo surrounding this episode, William Shatner got in a fight with the director when he was asked to exit a scene through what was established as a wall. Harry Landers, who played Coleman, had just had his upper right lung removed due to an infection and only did this role as a favor to a producer. Production ran way longer than expected and went $6,000 over budget. And then the episode's air date was delayed due to the death of former President Dwight Eisenhower. Things weren't stellar. So all in all, Star Trek was a million miles away from where they ended up. Although he was a story consultant for this season, this is the sole episode written by Arthur H. Singer, and the story idea came from Roddenberry. Singer was brought on for season three and apparently didn't really get this whole Star Trek thing, so kind of explains a little bit. I don't know who to put the blame on, but I'll just say this. Women be crazy! This is an episode that's hard to retroactively make sense, because the plot is entirely based around one woman going insane because women can't be Starfleet captains. Apparently Roddenberry regretted that part of Star Trek lore, but nonetheless, that was the show canon until Star Trek IV in 1986. 
And according to this episode compilation Turnabout Intruder was included on, it might be considered an alternate reality? I think perhaps if you interpret this as more of a story about self-loathing rather than any absolute truths about women versus men, it's a lot easier to take. You kind of have to fudge around the line about women not being allowed to be Starfleet captains, but otherwise, consider Janice's case of crazy separate from her gender. This episode is often considered one of the worst from Trek, and while I wouldn't necessarily call it good, I can't say it was the worst thing ever. Shatner playing an insane woman and being the most Shatner he ever was is a beautiful spectacle to behold. But as a series finale, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. In fact, the remaster was edited so that the final shot had them flying into a colorful nebula to like, end a little cooler, I guess. But we all know Trek was off to bigger and better things, so just consider this a weird, weird artifact of a 60s show that was on its last legs. And if you don't like it, well, consider this mutiny!